What's interesting to me about this photograph, and then Byron York from The Examiner, he was t t tweeting about this too. It's unusual to get information like this. We've been asking for more information. So now you have this photograph around. And it, in a way, it looks like that this is just how they found the documents that lying all over the floor at Mar-a-Lago, which is extremely unlikely. Obviously, right. these were placed there. But the visual, Jason, leaves, might leave people with the wrong impression. Well, the impression I got is that it was a, pu a public relations effort. The, yeah. This is not needed in a court document to make the case to the sitting judge. This was put out there knowing that they were going to go out there to the media. And I would love to see on the far right side there, there's framed photos of Donald Trump on the cover of Time magazine. What in the world does that have to do with this idea that there are classified documents? And what's behind those classified documents? The idea that they spread them out across the floor and started taking pictures of them does not instill confidence in how we're supposed to like do how justice. How confidential are they? Yeah, exactly. How? What else were they taking pictures of along the way? And this is not how we're supposed to administer justice in this country. Today is Wednesday, August 31st, 2022, and the feds have released photos of documents on the floor of Mar-a-Lago, plus a Time magazine cover of Donald Trump, allegations of political bias, widespread misconduct at the FBI. People are calling for the head of the FBI director, Christopher Wray, in a resignation, and Cash Patel joins the show live to react. My name is Benny Johnson. This is The Benny Show. This is a high-intensity moment. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the moment where you see how the machine machine works. If in case you were wondering who you were up against, now you know. What we have seen today, let's toss the photo up. What we have seen today in a release late last night at midnight from the Department of Justice is a photograph of top secret and classified documents chucked onto the floor of Mar-a-Lago along with a Time magazine cover. Time magazine cover of Donald Trump. So what you see here is the haphazard chucking of documents. I mean, literally strewn along the floor by these agents staging documents. This is a staged crime scene. What's going on here? Let's unpack all of it. So the feds are saying that they were working with Donald Trump's lawyers and Donald Trump's lawyers were giving them documents that they wanted. And then they weren't getting all the documents they wanted, so they had to get a general warrant to search all of the property, and that they were able to find documents in Donald Trump's desk drawers. They took those documents out, they staged them on the ground, and then they took photographs of them, and then they released those documents. Why? Because those documents are so dangerous and so damning to national security that we had to chuck them on the floor. We had to pull them up. Out of the desk drawer, here we go. So we pull the documents out of the drawer. I'm the FBI. I pull the documents out of the drawer, all right? These are so damaging. These documents are so damaging that I have to take these documents and then I need to throw them onto the floor. That's what's going on here this morning in this release. The FBI has taken the documents and are now throwing them onto the floor and taking photographs of it. So then you, what do you do? You take the cell phone, okay? You take your little cell phone, and then you take a photo of the documents I just threw on the floor. That's how it goes. That's how classified these documents are. That's how dangerous to national security this is. That we take them, and we chuck them onto the floor, and then we take photographs of them, and then we release and leak the photographs after we've staged them really beautifully right on the ground. We released the photographs of these classified documents because they're so dangerous to national security. This is why we do the program. The reason we do the program, the reason we do this every single day is so that you can listen to what's actually happening and not the noise from the corporate media vertically integrated into the DNC apparatchik and federal law enforcement apparatchiks in order to lie and to deceive you. Understand what's happening here. What's happening here right now is the culmination, the final and complete culmination of the true crime murder mystery that has been spread to the blue and on drooling morons in the media who have been wanting to get Trump for six solid years. 
They have been lied to. They've been manipulated into a state of absolute mental and, and physical collapse. These people are deranged. Trump derangement syndrome is a disease. And now they are being given the bombshell piece of evidence that they've been waiting for. The photos. Throw it up. Put the photo up. The photo of the documents strewn on the floor, staged to make it look like Donald Trump chucked them on the floor. Staged to make it look like Donald Trump is just, this is how he keeps his documents. He throws them onto the carpet next to the radiator and next to a Time Magazine cover. A Time Magazine cover, by the way, which is a Time Magazine cover about people going knock, knock. To Donald Trump. Do we have a close-up of the Time Magazine cover? That's the cover. The FBI releasing and staging this cover. This has no right to be in the photograph. The FBI staging this as a pretext, as a message to Donald Trump. Knock, knock. That's what this cover says. And it has all of Trump's adversaries outside of the window peering in, spying on him. There's symbolism here. There's meaning to this. The FBI left this box in the photograph. You can see that box is shoehorned there into the corner. The FBI put this box into the photograph for a reason. Let's zoom back out. This is the document. They put the big red covers up front. They lay them down on the ground, not for filing purposes, but in order to make it look as though this is how Donald Trump keeps his documents, chucking them onto the ground. What does Donald Trump have to say? Donald Trump on Truth Social saying this, that it was staged. Staged is now trending on social media. The term staged is now trending across social media. Terrible the way the FBI during the raid at Mar-a-Lago threw documents haphazardly on the floor, perhaps pretending that it was me, and then started taking pictures of them for the public to see. I thought they wanted them kept secret. Luckily, I declassified them. Joining us in just a moment is Cash Patel, the truly greatest source on these topics. Cash Patel will be joining us in just a few minutes. As we tear through this story, we will begin to show you precisely what evil forces we are up against. These are the forces that intend to deceive and lie to you. They took photos like this in order to stage a crime scene. These are dirty cops. Dirty cops. Jason Chaffetz, who was a lead investigator of Hillary Clinton during her time mishandling classified documents, had this to say on Fox News. But you know what the problem is that I have? When I was the chairman of the Oversight Committee and I issued subpoenas and we were trying to get after classified and highly sensitive documents at the IRS and the Clintons and whatnot, they destroyed them. They used bleach bit. And did the FBI do anything to help there? No, the Department of Justice issued, guess what, Mm. immunity agreements with no idea that they even had to cooperate with the government. Mm. So it's this double standard in administration of justice that I think is the heart of the problem that so many Americans have with this. So amazing. Hillary Clinton didn't keep documents in a drawer. Hillary Clinton didn't have any right to declassify documents. She didn't have the power to do that. Hillary Clinton had documents on an electronic server that was accessed by America's enemies. We know this because the FBI director admitted it and then refused to prosecute. The photographs were released in a 36-page court filing where the official said they'd uncovered a plot to obstruct the probe into the discovery of government records. The DOJ accused the ex-president's team of moving around and hiding classified documents as they had previously searched for. Officials claimed that they were likely concealed and removed from a padlock storage room where Donald Trump's lawyers said they were kept all together. Hold up! Stop! Wait a minute! Donald Trump's entire facility, have you ever been to Mar-a-Lago? I've been to Mar-a-Lago. Have you ever been there? Mar-a-Lago is an open, you know, it's a club. You can buy a membership. You can go there. You can have events there. There are a ton of events there. There's bunches of fundraisers there. You get invited to these fundraisers. You get invited to these various events. Turning Point has a gala there every year in the winter. I've been to Mar-a-Lago a bunch of times. Mar-a-Lago is Secret Service protected, okay? 
You don't get onto the property without going past a guy with a gun and telling him who you are and how you're getting in there. The idea that these documents were not in a secure area is insane. Presidents are given secret service. They're given security. They're given skiffs by Congress. They're funded to get this set up so that they have secure places to keep their documents. This happens to every single president, including Donald Trump. This concept that Trump was stashing documents in an unsecure location is insane because Donald Trump always has Secret Service with him everywhere he goes. Have you ever seen a photo of Donald Trump wandering around the mall? Donald Trump standing in a Cinnabon line by himself with his golf clubs? It's staged. This is staged. This is agiprope. It is the term used in order to rig and to manipulate, like an MK Ultra experiment, the midwits in our society who have been following along with the Get Trump True Crime podcast that has been broadcast for the last six years by the corporate press. They have never got him. These people are drooling morons. And they believe stuff like this. This is intended to make it look like Donald Trump kept documents thrown on the floor. Well, Rick Grinnell had this to say on Truth Social. Rick Grinnell saying, uh, hey, wait a second. This was all declassified. These papers, while they may have the classified marking, you know, a declassified thing still has classified markings on it. It just stamped declassified. Rick Grinnell said that these are declassified papers not kept digitally, like Hillary Clinton's, and accessed by America's enemies, guarded by the United States Secret Service, who was never president, her documents were never declassified, they were available digitally online for hackers, and then released to the universe. Guys, this is the end result of a fully and completely, totally, utterly struck through, corrupted DOJ, whose job it is, is to LARP You know what a LARPer is? Live action role play. Live action role play. LARPers are the people who dress up like their favorite comic book characters or video game characters and wander around inside of these sad convention centers and get a chance to be Batman for a day. Get, no, I mean, don't. I'd love to be Batman for a day, but for the sake of the metaphor, this is live action role playing by these FBI agents for the drooling audience of the left to believe that this is somehow the smoking gun that we have been waiting for in the Get Trump saga. Hillary Clinton, who did, not even in the same solar system of what Donald Trump's doing, never got raided by the FBI, never got her house stormed through, never got her servers chucked upon the ground, Deleted and smashed evidence, destroyed evidence, and the FBI never plotted to frame her. This is just a classic frame up. This is a classic frame up, and it's making people enraged at the FBI. Enraged, including, but not limited to, FBI agents. Guys, we're going to go on to B block here. FBI agents that are calling for Christopher Ray's resignation now. Allegation of political bias and widespread misconduct prompted the FBI to call for Christopher Ray's resignation. The FBI is collapsing. It's unraveling now. It's unraveling as whistleblowers pile up. There are now 20 plus whistleblowers that are calling for this kind of crap to stop. They're saying this isn't justice. This is the abortion of justice. This is the breaking news of the whistleblowers and the FBI agents calling for the resignation of the FBI director and a cleaning of the house at the FBI after this type of bad, dirty cop behavior. Listen. Tonight, just breaking now, a major new report from the Washington Times that just broke. It says rank and file FBI whistleblowers coming forward. Many are now saying that Director Christopher Wray has lost control of the agency and needs to resign. According to the Washington Times report, these whistleblower claims include allegations of bias, even being forced to sign false affidavits. And according to my sources tonight, who I spoke to within the last hour, 
uh, that are directly involved with the whistleblowers, there are at now at least 20 confirmed whistleblowers that have come forward. And according to their attorney, quote, I'm hearing from FBI personnel that they feel like the director has lost control of the bureau. He said they are saying, how does this guy survive? He's leaving. He's got to leave. Now, also breaking tonight, a new memo from the Attorney General, Merrick Garland, and his office. They're sending a stern reminder this night to staff about policies that limit contact with members of Congress. By the way, that would mean FBI members talking to members of Congress as whistleblowers. Uh, so this letter, obviously a convenient reminder from the Attorney General of the United States. So the question is, is he trying to silence these whistleblowers? Because it certainly looks like it at this hour. Kurt Sudiak, former lawyer and FBI agent who represents whistleblowers inside the Bureau, said there is no way that Director Ray survives this. Speaking to the Washington Times, I'm hearing from FBI personnel that they feel like the director has lost control of the Bureau. They're saying, how does this guy survive? He's leaving. He's got to leave. FBI whistleblowers are talking to Congress. Apparently 20 plus whistleblowers speaking to Jim Jordan. Jim Jordan has said this publicly multiple times saying that there is retaliation happening against whistleblowers inside of the FBI, good agents who are standing up against this criminality. You saw a bad, dirty cop, Timothy Tybalt, walk last 24 hours. This news broke. It happened on Friday. This guy was told to hit the bricks, got a kick in the ass, and sent out the door with a box full of Hunter Biden porn and crack pipes. Recent whistleblower disclosures to the House Judiciary Committee and Republicans about the agents being forced or coerced to sign false affidavits, claims of sexual harassment, and stalking. It also includes that fabricated terrorism cases to elevate performance statistics, and so on and so on. This has been reported for months by the Washington Times. These are reporters from outside of the organization looking in. I now wish to bring on the show somebody who's been on the inside of this organization and can explain to us precisely what is happening and in great detail the true authority on this issue. And we are so honored to have him on the show right now, Cash Patel. Cash, thank you for being on the program. Got to start off, obviously, uh, Stage Gate. Stage Gate. <laughs> is that what we're calling it? I this know. is perhaps you, okay. A couple questions off the top. You've you are close friends of Donald Trump. Donald Trump trusts you implicitly. We all know this. You are close inside of this world. You've been to Mar-a-Lago many times. You meet with Donald Trump privately. When you meet with him, do you have to tiptoe through all the stacks of classified documents that are strewn upon his floor? Maybe you could illuminate that for the audience. <laughs> Benny, it's always good to be with you. I love the fire. And as I said publicly, you know, I found out that Mar-a-Lago documents were in Mar-a-Lago when the world found out. Um, and uh, so I didn't have anything to do with that. I got appointed into his NARA rep in June-ish of this year, and I've been fighting to get the declassified documents out to the public. And of course, NARA stonewalled me via the DOJ and the FBI. Um, you know, playing bureaucratic gymnastics. Oh, we can't verify this. We don't know if you're doing this. Uh, do you have a clearance? Yeah, I have a TSSCI, the highest clearance in, in the country, and it's still active. Oh, we can't, we can't find it. So you can't come here and look at it. And you can't release the declassified documents that we have because, oh, wait, some of them are at DOJ, so we don't even really know where everything is. I mean, literally, this is the National Archives. We're supposed to historically document the presidential records and personal records of the former president of the United States, and they don't know where anything is. So what, what do you make of this? What, what do you make of this photograph? This is the start of the show. We've been raging about it. Perhaps you can illuminate for us uh, what happened here? Because to us, it looks like, if you can see on the screen right now, it looks like not only did they stage the documents by chucking these nuclear codes onto the ground, but they also dropped a Time Magazine cover in there? Knock, knock. What's yeah. going on here? Please, we need illumination from you, Cash Patel. So, first of all, uh, I don't... It is staged. Uh, that's um, I don't I wasn't there. I don't know if that's how they found them, but I doubt it. And those red and yellow things that you see on the floor are cover sheets. Those aren't classified. They're saying they're supposed to be used when you identify classified documents, but there's nothing on those cover sheets or any of the underlying documents which have white pieces of paper on them that the FBI and DOJ are showing 
President Trump never declassified them. So it's incumbent upon the government who are bringing or looking to bring criminal charges and the burden of proof, me as a national security prosecutor, you know, is familiar with that, uh, to show that. What they are doing is trying this case in the court of public opinion because what they're doing yes. from jump is to make sure Donald Trump never runs again. Now, be it through federal conviction that precludes them or so much dirt in the media that people get turned off. And all I see is this raid continuing to backfire because it's not being run by law enforcement. It's being run by government gangsters like Chris Ray and Merrick Garland. And it all goes back to Russiagate, the guys that I used to work for at the National Security Division as a terrorism prosecutor who authorized Russiagate are now the number two and three people in charge at DOJ under Merrick Garland who authorized this raid along with the same corrupt FBI crooks that trained and worked under Peter Strzok and Bill Priestap, Tybalt and company are the same people that work Russiagate, that work Hunter Biden laptop, that work the raid. You don't perp walk an FBI agent out of the building unless he did something wrong. It doesn't happen. Chris Ray has covered for these guys since the beginning. Chris Ray should have been fired and never appointed five years ago when Devin and I asked him to help us get to the bottom of Russiagate. He obstructed with Rod Rosenstein and company. Now these guys know they were on the precipice of releasing the other Russiagate documents that Devin and I could not release that Donald Trump declassified. And what do they do? They go raid Mar-a-Lago and say, Oh, can't see anything anymore. We have an open investigation. Okay, so first off, we have a clip for you. We're surprising you with this clip because it's our favorite clip of you as of late. Typically, our favorite clips of you are clips from our show because you just go absolute goblin mode. But you were caught off guard on Sebastian Gorka's show. It's a very short clip. You were caught off guard. This is your authentic reaction, as far as I can tell, to the breaking news that Timothy Tybalt had been kicked out on his ass from the FBI. Let's play that clip. Breaking news from the Washington Times on Friday out of the WFO, the Washington field office, special agent in charge, Tim Tebold, was escorted out of the building after. Oh, yeah. Escorted out of the building after whistleblower allegations that he showed political bias uh, in the handling of politically sensitive cases. Is something finally ha uh, happening or after six years? Cash, I love you, man. You and I spent Fourth of July together. I consider you a homie. But I, I've never seen you like you're like a very stable dude. Okay, you're very stable, like measured dude. That's why you get these clearances. But I've never seen you go woo. <laughs> that was my that was my best Ric Flair. Um, it wasn't as good, but I I think what I was trying to I hadn't heard of it literally till Seb pointed it out. The reason I hadn't heard of it is because. The FBI and DOJ broke their own regulations and lifted my name and redaction in the, in the most infamous search warrant in U.S. history. And I was getting crushed with racist threats and death threats and disgusting hate mail. And that's exactly the response they wanted. So I was a little behind on the media cycle and I missed it. And that's what uh, my reaction was for. But on top of that, remember, this guy, Tybalt, has now come out through his pro bono free legal services uh, from some white shoe law firm and said, uh, we encourage uh, this investigation to proceed. You know who also encouraged the investigations to proceed when we, they got fired as a result of my investigation? James Comey, Andy McCabe, and Peter Strzok. And those guys have been proven to be criminals. So this guy is touting the same line because they want the media to say nothing to see here. I can't wait for this investigation to be finished, but it goes up to Christopher Ray. He needs to be impeached. Garland as well. These guys are allowing the cover up, not only the instigation of an unlawful um, uh, application of the law, but the cover up, which is worse than the crime. It's always worse. And these guys are so arrogant. They think they can do that. And notice his attorneys didn't say the one thing they needed to say. Tim Tebow never worked on Russiagate, on Hunter Biden or on the raid. They use fancy legalese to say, well, he didn't technically supervise this part of that or the other thing. Hey, man, if your client's innocent, you know what you do? You say it. If he's not, you shut up. Yo. Okay, so you're talking about a cover up, but I'd like to t put the covers of these documents back on the screen and have you really, can you break it down? Like uh, like you were saying that the, it, these covers are important, but that the white papers underneath them are more important. Can you please, for, for, for people, the vast majority of Americans, probably 1% of 1% of 1% of Americans, uh, like actually handle classified information. So the vast majority of us are a little unaware, like are not sure how to take this. And so can you like in detail break down for us what your theory is on what happened here with these papers strewn across the floor? 
Yeah, it's a photo. It's a Photoshop or not Photoshop. It's a photo portrayal, a photo staged portrayal to dirty up Trump in the public. These types, when I was running investigations, we didn't try our cases in the public. We tried them in court under seal when it involved national security matters, especially sensitive targets. Um, and what they are doing here is they are basically trying to get Trump to look like he committed a crime in the public. So CNN, the New York Times and the fake news mafia can say it. These cover sheets are nothing more than cover sheets. They're in and of itself not classified. It's what we put on top of supposedly classified documents to move around and say what these are. Now, the kicker is, though, as I said before, I don't know what's under them. And President Trump repeatedly declassified whole sets of documents. And President Trump has publicly said, I declassified all this stuff. If that's the case, then they're not classified. Not to mention the fact that if he did it and they were talking with Mar-a-Lago, they are personal records of the president of the United States and the Clinton sock drawer case is the law of the land, which says the yes. presidential personal records never have to be returned. He can lawfully possess whatever it is. And that's the law per a federal court. You, one of your closest allies inside the administration, and I think somebody who you work very closely with on the outside of the administration, Rick Grinnell, is saying that these agents who did this need to have their badges and their guns taken. He's saying that these were declassified documents and that they were kept inside of a secure facility, which is Mar-a-Lago. You can't go to Mar-a-Lago without a camera. You can't even walk into Mar-a-Lago without a, a super uh, jack-looking dude with a giant gun saying, who are you? Give me your ID, right? I've tr like, I've been there. Okay, it's not possible. Rick Grinnell is saying this is a secure facility. What are you talking about? Uh, that these are unsecured. And m most importantly, these are declassified. Do you agree with that? Yeah, look, I think what he's saying is, you know, what we've said and what Tr President Trump has said, he declassified whole sets of documents. I was there for a bunch of it. I wasn't there for all of it. And what the media is going to just do is say, oh, he's guilty. But what the government hasn't done is disproven or shown these documents to still be classified. And they haven't said they're not presidential personal records. And that's the standard that was set out in the Clinton sock drawer case. That's the standard that we should be looking at. This classification argument is almost a red herring if these are presidential, excuse me, if these are personal records, because like Bill Clinton did, like Obama did, like Bush did, when they take stuff and they become personal records of a former president, they are shielded from ever being disclosed and they are within their rights under the law to have them. Do you think that these agents uh, who did this deserve to have their badges and their guns taken? I think Congress needs to haul them up and the whistleblowers need to keep coming out as I've been saying, and we need to peel back their own documentation, which will show their arrogance. It's the one thing I learned in Russiagate. They don't destroy it because there's their documents because they're so arrogant. They believe they're never going to get caught and they doctor their own information like Peter Strzok did, like Lisa Page and company doctored their own FBI pages to dirty up Trump. The same crew under them is now in charge of this investigation. And are you telling me because they did it once before, they did not do it this time? And you have Merrick Garland coming out and saying, oh, nobody at DOJ and FBI talked to Congress. Everybody should go to Congress. Go talk to guys like Jim Jordan and Chuck Grassley and Ron Johnson and tell them what happened. And if you need money for a lawyer because you are afraid of what's going to happen to you for whistleblower stuff, you call me at fightwithcash.com and we'll pay for your lawyer. Yes. I want you to, I know your time is short, but I want you to sound off on this uh, breaking from the Washington Times last night that the FBI agents are in total revolt against Christopher Wray over this. You have been someone who's often advocated for the good agents at the, at the FBI, and you're very vocal on their behalf. Uh, your comments about this recent sort of unraveling right now inside of America's largest law enforcement bureau. Yeah, so here's what happens. When you start these big types of investigations like we did when Russiagate, everybody says, oh, you're lying. You guys are corrupt, not us. Then you expose the truth. Then the media comes in and, and buries the truth in waves of misleading disinformation campaigns like the photo you've been talking about here. And then they go to Hollywood. And what we do the entire time is just keep working, keep working, keep working to discover the truth. And then what happens is you get guys on the inside to slowly turn the fire against each other. And that's what happened. Mm -hmm. DOJ and FBI are now stacked against each other. And I'm um, Glad there's a chorus of good agents calling for Christopher Ray's resignation. I don't think that's going to happen. That's not realistic um, mm -hmm. under this administration. 
unless we can have a whistleblower that ties Christopher Ray's conduct directly to the illegality of this raid and other actions, Hunter Biden laptop. And I feel there's no way these, these raids, these investigations could occur without the director's direct knowledge. Once that comes out, then the, the chorus call from these great agents needs to be heated and he needs to be shown the door. Uh, if Donald Trump called you up, final question, if Donald Trump called you up right now and said, what do you, what do you, like he's, he's tweeted, right? He's truthed about, forgive me, he's truthed about the raid saying that the, these, this was staged in order to make him look bad. If Donald Trump called you right now, here's the, here's the truth. Terrible way the FBI during the raid at Mar-a-Lago threw documents haphazardly all over the floor. They did it to make it look bad for me. I thought they wanted these kept secret. I declassified. Donald Trump calls you up on the phone and he says, what's your advice uh, given this new staging uh, and, and, and agiprope in the media? Your advice. Just let him continue to keep making mistakes because of their arrogance. Let him continue to put this stuff out. You're before a district court judge. Go over there with the expertise of the lawyer. Uh, he just hired a great new attorney in Christopher Kais to get over there and start fighting these in the court of law. Obviously, no one is better than Donald Trump than fighting these in the court of public opinion. But we have the midterms coming up. They're too important. And then we have the 2024 election cycle. Take the approach that Devin and I, we don't want the short term victory. We want the long-term victory. And Russiagate is the roadmap on how you do that, be it Hunter Biden laptop, be it January 6th, or be it the Mar-a-Lago raid. Their own documents will expose their corruption. Get the federal courts and Congress to put those out for the American people to read. Yeah, I think this is going to backfire, man. I think this is going to be a, a biblical backfire. I'm not sure they've ever done it. Yeah, they've never done anything like this before. And they keep getting this like a re weird ex-girlfriend who keeps getting more desperate in the DMs. And then she shows up on your porch. And, yeah. and like in the middle of the night crying and like running mascara and <laughs> you know, you know, she's wearing Melania's dress cause she raided Melania's closet and, and, and it's just pathetic. It's becoming pathetic. And I think it's going to backfire. I agree. I, All right. I agree. Cash, cash, where can people find your work? And I, I see you have a brand new shirt. Making reading great again. So the number one best selling children's book, the plot against the King, the sequel is coming out in three weeks. We're going to be back on Benny's show. And no. it's going to destroy the media. They are going to set fire to us. Uh, thanks for all your support there. Find me at fightwithcash.com, full on 501c3 charity, the Cash Foundation. We're helping vets. We're helping children. We're doing tuition assistance. And we're doing legal defense funds. And we're putting out missions against the fake news media. And of course, as always, on Truth Social at Cash. Um, but check it out. Help us out. Fight with Cash. The fake news media is now attacking charities, helping military veterans active duty officers and children, because I started it. Once again, we know they're over the target and all merch sales go right back to the foundation. So come, come and hang out with us. We're having a blast. We are not going to bend the knee to the government gangsters and the fake news mafia. Wait, go, go up on Cash's website. Look at this photo of Cash and Trump. Go up. <laughs> Look at that. Look at how Trump keeps his documents. Look at that. <laughs> those aren't on the floor. Look, I, I have the evidence. It's on your website. Yeah. Uh. Send it to the FBI. <laughs> <laughs> Those look very nicely, neat little stack of papers. Okay. Yeah. You got it. Cash, God bless you. Keep fighting. Thanks, Benny. Have a great day. All right. That's why we do this program. We do this program so that we can bring directly to you, directly to you, the information from the experts. We are 100% not corporately owned. We do this show out of a garage. We built the studio ourselves with these two meat hooks and the meat hooks of an incredible team here at The Benny Show. So if you support us, if you care, please consider liking and subscribing to our show. That's what we asked for. That's what we asked for. Now we do have some merch and we'll show you the, we'll show you the new merch store. We're very proud of our brand new merch, but... If you consider if you consider supporting us, the best thing you can do, we got we we launched the store last week. The best thing that you can do, click like, click subscribe, subscribe to our podcast. This is how you keep us going. There we are not owned by a corporation. We are not owned by anyone. If we're owned by someone and if we're allegiant to someone, it's you. You're the people we're allegiant to, and that's why we bust our butts every single day and night. Talk to the incredible producers of this program and you will find that we are never asleep. And we will bust our butts day and night to deliver you the truth, including in moments like this. And this is, and we're very, very proud of our team. That's why we have Sweet Royce 
and the Rolls Royce cam that we are uh, that we are premiering here. Where's Royce? There you go. The Rolls Royce cam. There he is. Ready to go. <laughs> we got a fan up here in the studio. We can't turn it on because it'd smash all the lights. But that's how we do this program, and we do it for you. God bless all of you. We are ready to go, and we are ready to fight. And it turns out that the people uh, inside the Biden administration and that regime are ready to fight us. As Joe Biden said last night, uh, if you are a brave right winger, this is a quote, uh, then we will use an F-15 against you. This is what Joe Biden said in this half-filled empty gymnasium that he was talking to last night in Pennsylvania in a town called Wilkes Bar, Pennsylvania. Joe Biden said, yo, if you like your Second Amendment, tough luck, tough luck, tough beans, Jack. Because I got F-15s, and I'm going to use them against you? Listen to this insane clip from Joe Biden. Uh, I guess the first clip is about Joe Biden banning assault weapons and then saying he's not going to ban any guns, and then he spirals. Dementia will do that to you. Hell of a drug. Uh, spirals into saying he's going to use sophisticated military weapons that you paid for to attack you? Joe Biden saying he's not. he wants to ban guns, and then he doesn't want to ban guns in the same sense. We took on the NRA, and we're going to take him on again, and we won. And we will win again. But we're not stopping here. I'm determined to ban assault weapons in this country. Determined. I did it once before. And I'll do it again. For many of you home, I want to be clear. It's not about taking away anybody's guns. In fact, we should be treating responsible gun owners as examples. So Joe Biden, I'm going to ban guns. Just want to be clear for those of you at home. This isn't about taking away your guns. <laughs> what? Ah! Ladies and gentlemen, whatever they have him hopped up on, you got to double or triple the dosage. I don't know. At this point, just weekend at Bernie's him. Just do the um, NSYNC bye 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 music video. Well, you just have them on the strings, right? And you just dangle them from the top of the uh, half-empty half empty stadium. Just be advised, he's talking to a half-empty stadium here. We have that clip. Thank goodness one of the Fox News cameras actually panned out and showed him. Here's Joe Biden saying he's going to use F-15s against you. How does that make you feel, ladies and gentlemen? Proud to be an American? Go. And for those brave right-wing Americans who say it's all about keeping America, keeping America independent and safe, if you want to fight against the country, you need an F-15. You need a, something a little more than a gun. Oh, really? This is interesting. If you want to fight against America, you need an F-15. Well, did the Taliban have an F-15? Because you just sacrificed all of Kabul, plus 13 Americans who died this week, last year, to the Taliban, to suicide bombers. Now, I, of course, I'm not advocating that, but you're a moron, Joe Biden. Baghdad is in collapse. A total th That country is being ripped apart right now by people who don't have F-15s. You're an idiot. This is dictatorial talk. This is Stalinist pablum that Joe Biden is speaking right now. Hey, you want, you want your rights? You better have sophisticated military weaponry that you paid for, taxpayers, out of the defense budget. A defense budget, by the way, that is larger than, I think, like the next 30 defense budgets combined in the world. This, the, the logic here, the logic here that in order to maintain your Second Amendment rights, which, by the way, every like there is absolutely nothing in the Second Amendment that does not preclude an American from having an F-15 or an F-16 or an F-22 or from like being Tom Go top, top Gun like Tom Cruise. Like, the gas bill would kill you, I suppose. But there's no reason why we can't be Tom Cruise uh, flying to work. How fast would, would Royce be able to get to work every day if he had an F-15? Guy's stuck on the bridge like all the time in traffic. He'd be able to get here, no problem. So, there's nothing in the Second Amendment that says you should not be able to own an F-15. In fact, when the Second Amendment was written, there were plenty of privateers who had cannons on vessels, and they got a sign, a, 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 a note of mark from the U.S. government to use those cannons against pirates. Those guys were protected by the Second Amendment. It wasn't about a single action musket with a little lead ball and a bit of gunpowder that you bit off and dumped down the tube. Uh, 
yo, if the founders wanted that, they were, they were very meticulous men, okay? In case, if you read these founding documents, these were very learned men. If they wanted that, then they would have put that in the document. The right to own a single shot musket shall not be infringed. No, they said the right to bear arms. They don't even say guns. They don't say muskets. They don't say can. They say arms shall not be infringed. So yes, I am a Second Amendment absolutist. Yes, there are places in America where you can drive tanks around, and I think that's freaking awesome. Okay? Gas bill will kill you. Maybe that's part of the plan. But I'm a Second Amendment absolutist. Don't like it? Call a convention of the states. Change the Second Amendment. Try it. If you don't like it, go ahead and amend it. Joe Biden's a moron. And he's old enough to remember when cannons were used on wooden ships. I think that was Joe Biden like a teenager. Scrubbing the poop deck. And now he's just scrubbing the poop out of his depends. So here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, Joe Biden, poopity poop and being a poopy pants and being a, you know, I think he, I think he relates to babies because of this. I'm a, I'm a father of two little kids. There's a lot of poopy diapers in my household. Joe Biden probably relates to babies in the audience because they have that in common. Here's Joe Biden creeping on a kid. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. How are you, baby? How old are you? How old are you? Almost double figures. Well, that's good. I mean, Joe Biden can't count past double figures. Joe Biden also can't count the number of times that he's been openly racist on camera. We're going to do a longer form like piece on this about how racist Joe Biden's previous comments actually are, whether it pertains to Indian uh, accents inside of uh, Dunkin' Donuts. You remember that clip? Or saying that you're not, or you're not black if you don't vote for him. Here's Joe Biden saying he knows where all the best basketball players are uh, in major cities. What does he mean by this? Go. Attorney General of the state of Delaware. And what he used to do is go down in the east side, the, what called the bucket, highest crime rate in the country. There's a place where I used to, I was the only white guy that worked as a lifeguard down in that area. On the east side. And you know where the, you can always tell where the best basketball in the state is and the best basketball in the city is. It's where everybody shows up. What? So I was the only white guy. So what that means is he was in a part of the city where a lot of black people lived. And that's where the best basketball players were in the city. And the most crime. That's what Joe Biden just said in that clip. You heard it with your own earballs. Wow. Now, there weren't a lot of people listening to it live. Thank God. The Fox News cameras panned to show a half-empty gym (laughs) inside of this little high school gym where Joe Biden's giving this speech. And by the way, half the people who are there are in uniform. So what that means is that they were ordered there by the fraternal order of the police or whatever, right? So these guys were ordered to go there. So that's half the audience. And the rest of the half the audience is, um, I don't know, like saying they got to clip their toenails at home. I mean, like, why would you ever go to something like this? Look at how pathetic and low energy this thing is. Uh, watch. Realize that? The point is, we ask so much of you. So much of you. I've not met a cop who likes a bad cop. There's bad in everything. There's lousy senators, there's lousy presidents, there's lousy doctors, there's lousy lawyers. No, I'm serious. Yeah, there's also lousy presidents. And you are one. hey oh, Joe Biden, look in the mirror, baby. What? Why would you ever go to a Biden event? There's so many reasons to not go to a Joe Biden event. A couple of things. One, you'll probably, I mean, if he gets close enough, you'll get sniffed. You'll get dandruff all over you. He probably smells terrible. Joe Biden smells like rotted cabbage, Munster cheese that's been left out inside of the summer August sun far too long uh, at the tip of the Florida Keys. This is a smelly man. This is a beleaguered man. This is a creepy man. He doesn't make any sense. He didn't make any sense on stage. And hey, if you're lucky, when you're in the audience, Joe Biden will order an F-16 strike on you, okay? Because you like your Second Amendment. This guy's a moron. He goes into this Pennsylvania-like hunting country. I know a ton of people from Pennsylvania. Are you from Pennsylvania? Shout us out in the comment section. I know a ton of people from Pennsylvania, and these guys are like, these guys like love hunting. They love deer hunting. Pennsylvania is, has like big wooded country. Most of the state is like big wooded country. There's killer deer hunting up there. 
And uh, Joe Biden's sitting there talking about how deer don't wear Kevlar vests, another stupid thing that he regularly says. Deer aren't wearing Kevlar vests. No joke, man. This is what Joe Biden says last night. This is how he's trying to appeal to Pennsylvania. And no wonder in recent polling, actually, uh, Mehmet Oz is now neck and neck with John Fetterman in Pennsylvania. Did you know that? And that Doug, Doug Mastriano, who's running for governor of the state, is gaining big time. That's also uh, in concert with some major polls from around the country showing that Herschel Walker is up in the Georgia Senate race. So this was a uh, not long-lived little poll bounce that they were saying for Joe Biden. The reason why they say that Joe Biden is having a poll bounce is because they're fake polls. These are called suppression polls. They happen in order to try and change public opinion and in order to boost people who do not deserve to be boosted. Remember, these are the same pollsters. They haven't lost their jobs. They're the same pollsters who told you that Donald Trump wouldn't win a single state in 2016. They said Chris Eliza on CNN and on the Washington Post, Chris Eliza said that Donald Trump's chances of becoming president have approached zero. This was published 24 hours before Donald Trump became president of the United States. Do not believe these frauds. The polling is actually looking incredible for Republicans. And seats that are not on the map are actually now on the map. And this FBI, dude, this FBI stuff, if I had my papers, I'd throw them again. This FBI stuff is not helping Democrats. It's hurting them. The American people are seeing through it. And just check the comment section on any one of these stories. People are disgusted by this. Because if it can happen to Trump, it can happen to you. Show me the man, I'll show you the crime. That's what Stalin used to say. Show me the man, I'll show you the crime. I'll get you. If you you dare cross me, I'll get you and your life will be over. Well, speaking of people's political careers over, House Republicans are preparing to impeach Joe Biden right after the midterm elections. According to Becker News, conservative Republicans are preparing to impeach President Joe Biden immediately following the 2020 midterm elections when they uh, take back power from the House Republicans. Hey, yo, you make your bed, you sleep in it. They made the rules. They made the rules. Now you can argue, and there's going to be tons of people arguing whether this is smart or not. Okay, fine. I ain't one of those people. I'm, I'm going to see how it plays out. But I am one of those guys who said, oh, oh, you said that you can add uh, extra time at the end of the football game? That was you making up those rules? All right, fine. Now that we're in the, now that we're the referee, we're going to add extra time until we get what we want, until we like the score. So this is what Republicans are doing. They impeached Donald Trump twice for fraudulent, fake impeachments. Nothing came of it. He was acquitted twice, the most acquitted president in American history. And now a number of rank and file conservatives are saying that they've already introduced impeachment articles in the current Congress against the president. So this is according to The Hill. They accuse Biden of committing high crimes in his approach to a range of issues touching on border enforcement, coronavirus pandemic, which are all of U.S. troops from Afghanistan, absolutely and verifiably demonstrably true. At eight At least eight resolutions to impeach Biden have been offered since he took office, three related to his handling of the migrant surge, three targeting his management of the U.S. withdrawal from Afghanistan, one denouncing the eviction moratorium designed uh, to help renters in the pandemic, and another for his overseas business dealings with Hunter Biden. Yo, that's going to be bad. Marjorie Taylor Greene uh, from the State of the Union saying that she wants to impeach Joe Biden for a number of subsequent crimes. Marjorie, take it away. America is weak. We do not have a president that can defend our country. We have a president that puts America last because he is literally serving China, Russia, and the world. He is a globalist. He's for the global economy. He is for the World Economic Forum, for the interest of China, and for the interest of Russia, and for anyone, anywhere, that has blackmail evidence on his sexually deviant, drug-addled, deadbeat dad, pathetic, sorry, embarrassing excuse of a son. Joe Biden has already broken his oath of office because all he cares about is protecting Hunter Biden, and he will not protect any of us. This is why I have introduced four articles of impeachment on Joe Biden. (laughs) You know, when you go into Buffalo Wild Wings and there's the range of sauces you can get and you can like pick like the super, uh, like the ranchy style white sauce and you can pick like the green sauce that ain't that hot and it goes all the way up to like melt your skull down to your bones like you just opened up the Ark of the Covenant and Indiana Jones, like it goes up to that sauce. 
I can't do that sauce. Can you can you eat the hottest buffalo wing at Buffalo Wild Wings? Let me know. I can't. I certainly can't. Uh, that sauce, whatever it's called, super blazing, super melt your face hot. That's uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene <laughs> in every statement and at, at every at every moment of comment. And we were very happy to have Marjorie Taylor Greene join us last week from uh, fresh off the steps of the Capitol with her impeachment charges against Merrick Garland. Uh, her uh, spokesperson, Nick Dreyer, who is a Green spokesperson, said that she believes Joe Biden should have been impeached as soon as he was sworn in. So, of course, she wants it to happen as soon as possible. Nick went on to say that Marjorie Taylor Greene wants new drafts articles of impeachment against Joe Biden for the FBI raid. It's going to backfire. Calm yourselves. It's going to backfire. We know what we are fighting against. Our fight is not flesh and blood. Our fight is a spiritual fight. It is a good and evil fight. And we talk many times on the show about the clear lines of good and evil. If you look at what these people are doing, if you look at what they're doing to your children, if you look at what they're allowing on our southern border, if you look at what they're doing to the potential for your child to live a good life in this country, you can see that what they are, what they are is the personification of evil. And the banality of evil is that I will do anything to hurt you. Satan behaves this way inside of the Holy Scriptures, and it happens in our regular day-to-day lives. The number, I think it's... It's an old quote. The greatest trick the devil ever played is to convince you he doesn't exist. Don't think that you're better than the people of the Bible. Don't think that demons don't still exist. Don't believe that evil isn't personified in our day and that is not exposing itself with extreme and total regularity. How many demonic clips do we have to show you about literal demons in the streets during the Roe v. Wade overturning? They want the sickening darkness of hell to take over the greatest nation ever known to man, a nation that still has God inscribed on its currency, that still has a believer base of over 80%. Do you know that over 80% of Americans believe in God right now, today? Okay, after 100 years of them trying to cancel God. And that's what this is all about, actually. It is a battle of light versus dark. It is a battle of good versus evil. When you see the top secret documents being staged on the floor, thrown on the ground, and released to the drooling masses, you know that it's not just corruption. It is the banality of evil. People who are willing to do anything that they can in order to obstruct the truth and in order to harm a movement of people who are moral, good, and generally righteous. All men are fallen. We understand this. But there are those of us who still believe that this nation is founded because all men are created equal by God. And by God, we're going to fight for it. We fight for it on this show because we believe in God. We believe in our families and our rights to protect them. And we believe in this country. We still do. And we know that this country can see a rebirth of freedom if good men and women stand up and fight. And so that is why we do this show every single day. We want to thank Cash Patel for coming on the show. We want to say thank you. We want to say we appreciate you and we love you. And we want to hear from you. We give you our email address in order to hear from you. If you think we're not covering something correctly, or if you want us to cover something, let us know. We sort of lay it out on the field here. This is a show run by you, operated by you, owned by no one, other than the sweet, sweet, beautiful patriots who watch every single morning. And yo, if you're a, if you're a lib and you hate us and you watch, we say thanks too. <laughs> thanks for watching this long. We do this show in order to educate and in order to break the noise and show you exactly what's happening. So that's our email. Send us a message. Let us know how we're doing. And most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, stay free because we're born free men and women. God designed us that way. God created us equal. It's in our founding documents. But those documents don't mean anything unless we live it. So we're going to live it and do a full send like we did on this show. Thank you for watching. My name is Benny Johnson. This is The Benny Show.